this is the uh, the new coach of USC men's basketball, which is a team that, believe it or not, now this season, in my opinion, I think, because I watch a lot of sports uh, because it's kind of like my religion, I think you guys have a little bit of swagger, definitely a bit more confidence from last season. Of course, uh, that's when uh, Coach Kevin O'Neill was there. And, uh, you know, what's interesting is that uh, Coach O'Neill, as you know, Coach Canto, I mean, he's a good guy. He led USC to a successful year in the NCAA tournament, you know, 19 and 15, 2010, 2011. Last year, of course, we'll try to avoid. It was it was a rather rough one, but there were a lot of injuries. But you guys seem to be pretty healthy. You have a lot of juniors and seniors on the roster. You're 8 and 11, 3 and 3 overall in conference play. Are you feeling pretty good about where the team's going right now? You know, I am. It, it was a difficult week uh, with all the adversity, but I thought the guys fought through it. We took the first place team down to the wire and had our chances, you know, lost by two, and then we came back and, and beat Oregon State. Um, so I was definitely pleased with that. We had a very good practice yesterday, a lot of energy and enthusiasm, and I think we have room to grow. I mean, we do have a lot of older players, but not a lot of them have a lot of time playing together because we put this team together different ways with JC kids, transfers, and guys that were injured last year that are now healthy. And so you put them all together, and, you know, we had a very difficult preseason schedule. So I think uh, our best basketball could be ahead of us. And I think in this situation, we're just trying to get better every day and put us in a position to be playing our best, you know, uh, in February and into March. Now, are there any specific changes that you, as the new coach of Trojan Basketball, that you plan on implementing that will help bring USC in a position to perhaps make a reappearance in the NCAA tournament? Well, you know, the first thing I've emphasized is pushing the ball. When we get the ball you know, off a rebound, I want high outlets, and I want to push it down the floor, and I want to try to attack. It's easier to score when, you know, when you're, let, what I call numbers, like a break, like a two-on-one or a three-on-two, where the defense isn't set. When you have to come down and, and try to score against five defenders every time, it makes it very, very difficult. So I want to be in what I call attack mode. You know, we come down, we're trying to get to the rim a lot, try to get to the foul line, try to make a play. And then obviously, you know, if the defense is set or it's a free throw or a dead ball, you know, we're going to have to run a play. But I just have that mindset of letting our guys, you know, take shots. Um, in doing so, you might take a bad shot here and there. But overall, I think the guys will play a little looser and um, more free. And, you know, that's just kind of what my first step is in that. And I've made some tweaks and added some plays and added some things here. But the situation, it's hard to just – you know, change everything very, very quickly. Yeah, and that's, I guess that sort of leads into my other question, is that, I mean, you are the new coach and things like that, but it's, it's got to be difficult for you to try to implement these changes. But at the same time, it's important, of course, maintain some form of stability. Absolutely. You know, our staple uh, with KO has been our defense, our man-to-man defense, and so we want to keep that intact. Anytime you change a, a voice on any team at any level, it's going to take time and adjustment, and it's, it's not really... You know, easy for anybody involved. I mean, players, coaches, staff, everybody. It's it's completely different, and um, you know, but but it's it, we just need. I think we need a little time. And we just need to keep working, and the biggest thing is just to be you know to be able to compete every game in, in and out, home or away, because when you're in conference, uh, every game's tough. It doesn't matter where it is. It's just going to be challenged. But uh, we just want to keep fighting and um, you know see what happens. Yeah, well, one of the interesting things I know is that since you're a coach and and I'm a huge sports fan, I played a little bit of sports in my day in the past, and I know that rule number one, you always got to take it one game at a time, one play at a time, and things like that. But a quick question I wanted to ask you, you don't necessarily have to have an answer one way or the other, but long-term goals for the program and maybe even for yourself, do you hope perhaps that you can continue being Trojan, you know, the USC men's basketball coach next season and beyond? Yeah, I definitely would like to be considered, you know, absolutely. And, and um, you know, I've, I've got kind of an opportunity to, to show what I can do as a head coach. Um, you know, I understand the program moving forward needs uh, it needs consistency. It needs uh, better recruiting. You know, we need more development of players. Um, I've been here 12 years, so I've seen, you know, we've had years where we went to Sweet 16 and we've won a Pac-12 or Pac-10 tournament, and, you know, we've got – or, or actually five guys in the NBA right now playing really well. and So we've had some success. So I've seen it, you know, when we've been good, and I've seen it when we've dipped. And so um, I do have a vision of kind of, I think, what what it's going to take. And uh, number one is recruiting. you got to get good players. Number two, got to play a style of play that attracts recruits. Um, and then number three, if you do that, people will join in and support it. And then everything kind of comes together. Um, 
so you know, yeah, that that would be my plan or for the plan for the future coach. I'm just trying to kind of keep everything intact right now and keep the guys focused. Um, and just keep them playing hard and, you know, kind of take it from there. Yeah, of course, you want to keep the, the ship sailing in, in the right direction. And what's interesting, I think, is that we can talk a lot about statistics when it comes to shooting percentage and rebounds and things like that. But I have an interesting stat that kind of goes into what you're talking about with the recruiting and sort of the whole animosity and excitement about Trojan basketball that, unfortunately, past couple of years, and also you can make an argument, you know, historically has been lacking because a lot of folks – literally bleed football here and basketball is something that they look to in the spring to sort of keep them occupied in the midst of checking websites to see who's going to be the football team one way or the other recruiting wise but I think what's interesting is that I'm sure you guys are aware of this at the Galen Center thus far this season uh, the the venues only averaged approximately 4,000 fans per game but when you guys hit the road the opposition their venue has averaged approximately 10, 10, 10,500 or so fans per game I mean that is a huge difference do you think that impacts gameplay at all absolutely you know that home court you know is a big advantage for that home team absolutely i mean with the fans the student section right on the floor i mean it it definitely is and um you know anytime you go on the road it's a challenge you know it's it's a new environment you have a, a different travel schedule a different everything a different environment completely um and so that 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 can become a problem but you know we need to be consistent and we need to win and we need to bring some enthusiasm into the program and i think people will come and watch and you know traditionally you know you do get big crowds for the UCLA game in Arizona but to to have people come you know game in and game game out you know we we got to be better and i after that last season with all the injuries and we struggled um i think it was it's been tough to get people to come out but We've got people here in the marketing department that are doing a great job. They're working, uh, being creative and trying to get people to come out. And we had a good student section for the Oregon game. It was completely full, and I thought they were really into the game. And it seemed like people had a good time. So we just got to take steps in the right direction and, you know, try to get it to where we know it can be. Awesome, Coach. Well, quick question. Last one of the interview I might ask is that something that I've noticed uh, through the years is that uh, the USC basketball team, I'm sure that, of course, you've noticed this as well. Uh, you guys play okay at home, but the big problem always comes on the road. Uh, luckily, you did beat Utah. That broke a string of 14 uh, road games that you guys lost. Uh, the last one, of course, coming in Riverside in November of 2011, which is a while back. Uh, do you plan on, on you know, tr- is it a composure issue? Is it, you know, because USC, I mean, it's the same team, the same guys, same talent. They're just wearing yeah. the red uniforms instead of the white. Yeah, I mean, when you go on the road, you have to play with a lot of poise. you got to be able to play through the, the uh, home team's runs. I mean, most home teams will make a run during the game, and you've got to stay together, and you've got to be able to execute at the right time. you got to do a good job of managing timeouts because there's going to be times when a home team makes a run, and that's where you got to really stay together. You know, the, the players on the bench and the staff and everybody, um, you know, like I mentioned earlier, when you go on the road, it's a different schedule, it's a different environment, right. whole different facility, and um, you know, it's it's if you if you, you you can be good and win home games, but if you want to be great, you got to be able to win games on the road. You got to be able to do it consistently, and that's where we eventually you know want to be. Um, and uh, you know, our first uh, chance to to take a step forward is going really to be Thursday. I thought we played really well at Utah. And beat them by 17, and then you know I think Utah turns around and goes to Washington and wins. So I mean it kind of shows that you can uh, win on the road, uh, but you just got to play better basketball. That's the bottom line. And you know we got to do a better job rebounding. We got to do a better job making foul shots. And if we do that, then you know hopefully we'll be in a position to to, to get one. Awesome, coach. Well, good luck. Thank you for coming on the radio show. Best of luck in Tempe, and of course in Tucson. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay, my pleasure. Bye bye. There you have it. Thanks again, Coach Cantu. Really do appreciate it. We're going to take a short break here on Conrad's Corner. I play a little bit of Kenny G, a little bit of jazz to sort of ease us into this Wednesday morning. Uh, thank you for listening, everybody. My name's Conrad Wilton. We come back here on the radio show. We're going to have a top story, uh, not about USC basketball, but we're going to still keep it in the sports arena. This one is a little bit more disturbing, of course. I don't know if you heard the reports, but there was a post-game locker room brawl after USC had their AWSs handed to them after the loss at the Sun Bowl to Georgia Tech. My name's Conrad Wilton. This is Conrad's Corner. It continues right after this.